Mum and Dad owned Gill House Farm and they were farmers. Um, and then Mum worked, obviously, till she had me, she worked for Dr. Esco from about 1948 up to 61, something like that. Well, she did everything really. She was the receptionist, she dispensed the medicines, um, she'd help him if there was a bit of nursing to do. So, you know, um, she had to sew somebody's thumb back on one day, they cut it off. So, she, Dr. Eskill obviously sewed it back on, but, you know, mum was there with the whatever you do, <laughs> dabbing it with this and that, or whatever, yeah. Right. So, she did a bit of everything. I mean, I think there was other reception, you know, others. Because I think Marion Burley was, was one, but, you know, obviously, I think they only had, as far as I can remember, they only had, like, one at a time. They didn't have two or three people in there. So, yeah, so she just did a bit of everything, trying to drive him about and you know, all sorts. So did she go out and visit people as well? Or? Oh, yeah, she, they had surgery in the morning, and then in the afternoon they did their, their rounds, and she'd go with him on the so rounds. How to drive, yeah. Well, that's how she, yeah, Dr. Esco taught her how to drive. When I was 14, I was quite quite poorly. Dr. Esco wanted to send me to hospital. Mum didn't want me to go, but the one day he came up to see me three times and he phoned up twice to check okay. on how I was. Um, I don't know whether you get that so much today, but yeah. Five times. My mum's always telling me that. He, five times, three times he came up and twice he rang up. Yeah. Yeah, he was respected because he, if you knew when, if you went to him with something wrong, he'd put you right. Yes. You know, and he'd find out what was wrong. Yeah. I mean, I know a gentleman that um, had an accident with a saw blade, a circular saw, and cut his hand through, um, through the palm of his hand quite quite bad. And he went to the doctor, and the doctor said, oh, we'll sort that out now. And he said, he thought, well, I'd be going to hospital. Said, no, he said, we'll sort that out. And, he, and the actual sinews that were inside his hand, he sewed them all up delicately, put his, stitched his hand all back up. And he's 84 now, the gentleman is. And you say, look, he said, you can hold your hands up. And you said, you can't see which one it was. He did such a good job. He mixed in with the village, didn't he? He, um, well, he started the Moat Society and all that sort of thing. You know, he didn't not have anything to do with the village. He was part of the village. And, and if, if you were poorly or being poorly, he would ask, are you feeling better now? He wouldn't ignore you or, or whatever. He'd say, oh, you're better now, so-and-so. You know, he, no, I, I think... I think he was well respected and well well liked. And yeah. I think he did quite a bit for the village. Oh, to David and Heather, who worked hard to make a really fine farm, both of you are fortunate. I am even now fortunate in 1981 because Heather came back to work with me as a lady in her own right with very great respect and, of course, love to both of you. John Esco, September 1981.